You know, hunting camps have a way of bringing on rifle envy. <laughs> and African hunting camps more than most, because a lot of folks who hunt in Africa get a special rifle for the occasion. It's got a lot of history and a lot of tradition, and there's a gentleman in camp who is allowing me to use the rifle that I am envying him for right now, and it is this classic. I think you can see right offhand that we've got some pretty fancy Bastogne Walnut going on here. I think that's extra fancy grade, and it's a classic bolt action dangerous game rifle for Africa. Ooh, and it's chambered for the famous 416 Rigby. This big guy has been around since 1911, I think. Big cartridge that's quite popular over here in Africa. And it's a, a great option if you want to move up from a 375, yet you don't want to jump up to the 500s or even the big 45s. Pretty nice option. And in a rifle like this, hoo -hoo -hoo, let's just go over this Park West Arms Bold Action Model SD76 rifle to see what makes it so special. Obviously, we've got that beautiful wood that we've already commented on. And it, of course, has fleur de lis checkering. And it looks awfully fine to me. I'm going to guess 22 lines per inch, perhaps, maybe even a little more than that. Nice and sharp, gives you a good grip. So the stock, I think, is probably about what you want. Look at what we get for recoil control with this straight line comb right here. The bolt clears it, but it's not dropping. So you're going to get your head essentially sliding under that when that recoil comes back. That rifle's not going to want to kick up and slap you in the face so much as come back into your shoulder, which is what you want. And that is assisted by the shadow line raised cheek piece right here. That really helps moderate the recoil. So does the broad comb, nicely rounded. You don't want a sharp comb on a hard kicking rifle. So all of that really works to moderate recoil. Unfortunately, this recoil pad does not, but this is a traditional hard rubber red style. It was on all the early British African guns and a lot of guys like that. And what makes this possible, I think is a mercury reduction tube in the fore end of this stock. I do not have permission to take this stock off to show you, but he told me that what in the, what's in there and that's what's moderating the recoil. So uh, all told, I think it's a pretty handy rifle that is not going to kick the bejesus out of you when you're shooting it. In fact, the gentleman who used this rifle said he never feels it go off on dangerous game. And I think we can all understand that. Even we deer hunters know that when you fire at an animal, you rarely feel any kind of recoil. So what else can I tell you about this beauty? As far as uh, looks, you'll see that it's been upgraded with a case color hardened receiver, which is, I like it. I mean, some people don't like it, but I've always enjoyed that. Just a little extra touch to it. It has the full metal quarter rib with the open side on it, and it's your shallow V leaf. And then you've got, of course, the front post gold bead, but there's a hood on it. That might be a special order. And the hood, of course, keeps the bright light off of it so you don't get too much glare on that gold bead. The barrel looks to be about 24 inches. That yeah, looks about right. Kind of a standard for the big bores over here, although a lot of the guides will go with 22 inch barrels just because they're a little quicker, a little more maneuverable. But you've got to remember, the PHs generally aren't shooting until the stuff has hit the fan and it's close. So they need to be able to move and handle quickly. As a hunter, I think you're better served with the full length barrel. You'll see we've got the black ebony tip. That's a classic on African rifles. That protects the end grain of the walnut stock, of course. And that is echoed in the pins right here. That little black circle you see, those are literally ebony pins through the action that strengthen it against all that recoil. You got to remember the recoil lug is right up here under the receiver of the action and all of that energy is being transferred back into the stock which is weak at this point because of the magazine. There's a lot of wood removed from that magazine area. So these cross pins help to control and strengthen that rifle. 
You'll notice that there's an extended belly on this rifle that allows it to have four rounds down. And again, when you look at that big 416 Rigby, that is a wide case. I think the diameter on that is about 0 0.550. So it's a good fat case and yet you can get four of those down and they're going to be neatly controlled of course by this action this is a classic mauser style controlled round feed bolt you've got your big claw extractor of course and that grabs the cartridge when it comes out of the magazine and it is held that's why it's called controlled round feed and that of course also helps with short stroking you hear stories about guys who get excited and they don't come all the way back and if you don't have controlled round feed when you're coming to eject that cartridge and you shove forward again you end up with a loose cartridge on top of one that might or might not come out of the magazine and you've got a real mess or with this controlled round feed when you come back if you don't come back far enough to eject it with the standing blade ejector inside of the action it won't come off shove it back in you're back in business so it's just a great system and it's well revered over here i don't know that it's absolutely necessary for hunting africa i have used traditional push feed rifles with perfect success but it is a nice feature and if you're going to get a beautiful custom rifle like this that says africa why not go with a controlled round feed like this so uh trigger on this i don't have a measure here to tell you what the trigger is for a pull weight but i'm going to guess it's about let's just try it gosh that's probably three and a half pounds i might want to go with four on a big bore like this with a dangerous game because of the excitement but you can always specify that uh, the sling system they've got the two screws here they call that a ken howell style sling stud and uh got one up front on the barrel barrel band now the reason they have a barrel band on a big kicking rifle like this is because you don't want that pin sticking out like on traditional rifles because of the recoil coming back you might get your hand in there and rip your finger been there done that don't need to do it again um what else have we got here i see he's got quick release tallies for the scope so you can take that off and then you're still able to use your open sights should anything happen with the scope. Um, nice system. The safety, of course, is your traditional three position. If you know the Winchester Model 70, you're familiar with that. The safety all the way back blocks the trigger and the bolt handle so you don't accidentally open that bolt handle and drop around out in the brush. Go to the first position forward and that still blocks the trigger so you're not going to fire but if you do want to remove a cartridge in safety you can do it this way and the course fully forward and the rifle fires but the real safe way to unload a magazine with a rifle like this is with that trap door you just drop all the cartridges out and i think i've said before on some of these videos on gun reviews this system is traditional and beloved more so than the drop box magazines because with the drop box magazine you might accidentally drop it out now we all know that there are some really excellent systems that hold those magazines in they don't accidentally drop out but still you might remove it and lose it forget where you've put it etc cetera, etc cetera. guys know how to get around that by bringing extras but you could also damage those magazines this style you really have difficulty damaging it because it's all enclosed the spring is enclosed, the follower is enclosed, so there's no dinging and danging that's going to damage that. You've got your rounds in there, they're going to stay. They do have to make them with the quality I see here, which is a pretty difficult press on that release inside of the trigger bow to release that. So there's no danger of that happening. It's just, I think, an, a well done system right here. Um, I'm pretty sure they're doing CNC machining on these Park West actions. Uh, if you remember the Dakota rifles, they were famous for that. Guaranteed some sub MOA accuracy, even out of a big bore like this 416. That's pretty impressive. Uh, as the Africans will often tell you, you don't need that degree of accuracy for the ranges at which you shoot most of this big stuff like buffalo and hippo and elephant and all the rest of it. But boy, who doesn't mind having a rifle that's sub MOA? Uh, boy, gosh, that's about it, guys. Oh, I know it's right here. There is a steel cap 
with checkering on the pistol grip. That is a nice touch in a custom rifle. If you're looking for some extra things to do to your custom, that's one to consider. Obviously you don't need it, but it sure looks cool. You could also do it on the butt if you want, but I think a rubber pad is a lot more, well, it just makes more sense because if you're standing your rifle up in the corner or something, you're not gonna be scratching or damaging any checkering in the butt and it's gonna stick a little better, sort of slide out from a wall or something. But golly, overall, I don't think you can beat a rifle like this. If you are envious of this rifle, like I am, <laughs> I think Park West would be more than happy to entertain any notions you might have for having one built for yourself. You don't have to get all of these fancy accoutrements. The basic rifle is just as functional as this one, and it's still going to look awfully classical African. So whether you're in an African camp or only dreaming of getting there, this is a rifle worth checking out. So fulfill your dreams. That's it for now on Ross Bomer Outdoors. I want to thank all you guys for joining me. If you have ideas for gun reviews on future videos, let me know. And if I come across them in the field, we'll do another video along the lines of this one. Until next time, this is Ron Spomer. I'm honest and shoot straight.